Welcome to the peak where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Mike Mittman. On this week's episode, an organization that advocates for children with special needs, snazzy locations for men's shopping, and how technology offered at St. Luke's has changed the face of surgery. All that and more coming up on The Peak. Enjoying outdoor and social activities can be a challenge for a child with disabilities. Let's see how the Miracle League of Northampton County steps up to the plate with their commitment to inclusivity and social development. It's a uh pure joy when you come out here and you see these kids who uh, normally would not get the opportunity to play baseball, to see them smile, to see them achieve, to see them just enjoy being a kid. And the, the sheer joy that they have on their face is, is priceless. You can't buy that at a major league ballpark. You can't get that even with your own high school teams or your Legion teams. It's one of the best places in the Valley because of that. The Miracle League is a baseball facility that offers those with intellectual and physical disabilities the opportunity to play baseball. Every single summer, we get to come out and play this joyful sport. <laughs> Miracle League is the opportunity for children of any ability to be able to come out and play baseball, period. It doesn't matter how fast you can run, if you can run, if you can catch the ball or not. Every player bats each inning, every player hits. There are no strikeouts in Miracle League and every player scores in each inning, and the game ends in a tie. These kids are very courageous, and uh, every day we see something that just moves us. When he was three years old, he used a walker when he first started to participate, and he would walk with his walker to each base, and the buddies would help him along, and every year he's progressed significantly to the point where just a year ago he's now running the bases on his own. So it's been really huge, and he really gets the opportunity to just come out be him and play ball. The fact that the baseball can be provided to these kids, unbelievable. Everybody wants to feel part of the game. And this particular field, a facility that's handicap friendly, makes that possible. When the games begin, the field comes alive because the players make it that way. We try to teach our kids uh, just to have, have a good time and enjoy their experience, and make sure it's positive. We have a lot of energetic kids on our team, which is really awesome for the buddies that come and for us as coaches. You learn a lot from these kids. They love it here. They love when they, when they hear their name on the video board and they hear the crowd cheering for them. It just motivates you. They get on the loudspeaker and they say how far he's come as a player and they're like, oh, Wayne Kuyper. How does it make you feel when you're out on the field? It makes me feel joy and happiness. The volunteers are an untold story with the Miracle League. Over 10 years, we've had over 10,000 volunteers here. To have an all-volunteer organization funded by donors for 10 years, as you can see, we're thriving and uh, hope it continues for another 10 years. When you get outside teams that come and volunteer their time, their Saturdays, their Tuesday nights, to come and volunteer and they're hyping the kids up, it just makes such a, a great experience for everybody. I haven't met a group that's been out here volunteering that didn't want to come back. And it's amazing, not only for the kids, but for the community. The Miracle League continues to need our community support. So any support that anybody can make, it goes toward helping these kids continue to play baseball. I've been coaching baseball all my life, and this is the first time the players taught me. It gives you a whole new perspective. It made our life more happy and more joyful. I can't remember a time that we didn't come here and enjoy all of our Saturdays together at the Miracle League. It's turned into something so much more than just, hey, let's go play baseball. All 
organizations like this wouldn't be possible without their volunteers. Anytime we help out in our community, it's a guaranteed home run. Now let's check in with Holly as she explores some of the trendiest places for men to shop. Looking your best is easy when it comes to the number of choices for men's fashion here in Lehigh Valley. Now we know shopping can be a drag, but we can probably guarantee that what you're searching for is right under your nose. Tie those shoes and let's go. Spruce up your wardrobe at Assembly 88 in Allentown. This men's clothing shop focuses on quality brands and great customer service. Find just what you're looking for, from shoe brands like On and Olakai to clothing brands like Peter Millar and Viore. Blending the strength of the city's manufacturing heritage with the smooth professionalism of its 21st century renaissance, Assembly 88 offers something for every guy who wants to look good from 9 to 5 and from 5 to 9. The staff's goal is to make guys feel good about shopping and about themselves. Make sure your dollar goes far when it comes to what you wear. We get it, durability is key, which brings us to all weather selvage denim located at the Promenade Shops in Center Valley. The mission of all weather selvage is sustainable denim fashion suitable for all occasions. The store was named Selvage because AW's fabrics are woven on vintage shuttle looms. This technique was originally patented by Levi Strauss in 1873 when jeans were intended as a durable workwear. The owner moved from strictly online sales to a brick and mortar storefront after deciding there's nothing quite like shopping in person, especially for denim. Shopping here is a personal experience centered around finding the fabric and the fit that suits you best. There are a couple of special discounts offered. A hole in one on the golf putt challenge can earn you a free pair of jeans. You can also earn discounts on items in the store by leaving a Google review before you check out or besting the owner in his Nintendo arcade. And you might want to talk sports with the owner, Andre Williams. He's a former NFL football player. Now let's get fancy at the London shop. Helping you make a great first impression since 1939. The London shop in Easton is a family owned and operated store selling men's suits, sportswear and outerwear. Drip from head to toe in great brands tailored to fit you for your next big event or grab a fresh tie and new shoes to elevate your go-to look. Get personal attention from a knowledgeable staff ready to help you find the product that reflects your personal style. Need something repaired or altered? The London Shop can help you with that too. We know it might not be your favorite thing to do on a weekend, but we're confident with the stores we showed you today, you'll wish you went all the time. It's like I say, look good, feel good, do good, and you deserve it. I'm Holly Harr with Discover Lehigh Valley, and that was A Peek at the Valley. Well, I better make some room in my closet. Thanks, Holly. Up next, healthier cooking with St. Luke's. Stay tuned, you're watching The Peak. St. Luke's partnered with the Trolley Barn in Quakertown to show that going out to eat can be both healthy and delicious. Take a look. Hi, I'm Dr. Mary Pagan from St. Luke's University Health Network, and I'm here at the Trolley Barn with Nick, the owner of the Meat Wagon, and we're here to put a healthier twist on a delicious recipe. Nick, what are we making today? Today we're gonna to be making brisket egg rolls in the air fryer. Excellent, let's get to it. So we'll get started with the egg rolls. Let's start our brisket egg rolls by chopping up an onion and putting it in a pan with oil, salt, and pepper and sauteing until golden brown. You'll see the, the, the color. We have a nice uh, caramelized onion. Excellent. And we're gonna start building our egg rolls. You wanna give me a hand? I'm excited to, let's go. Lay out the egg roll wrapper and add a good portion of your caramelized onions. Then add your favorite protein. You can use chicken, you can use pork, you can use anything you wish to make these egg rolls. We just had a lot of brisket and it's delicious. Top it all off by adding some cheese. Use Swiss cheese for a healthier option. Add a little water to the corners to help everything stick together. Then tuck in the sides and roll it up. Finally, adding a little oil to the outside of the egg rolls will help them get crispy in the air fryer. 
Okay. And then we're going to set them in the air fryer for, for 10 to 13 minutes, flipping them every three minutes or so. They really did crisp up nicely on the outside. Mm -hmm. Oh, that cheese melts really beautifully in there too. Plate your egg rolls with some sauce for dipping and enjoy. They look delicious. I can't wait to try them and you should come and try them too. Thanks a lot, Nick, for helping us to make these delicious recipes with a healthier twist. Absolutely. Eating healthier just got easy. Thanks for sharing that delicious recipe. Now let's check in with Ashley. She is joined by Dawn Godshaw from Community Action Lehigh Valley as she talks about the challenges that shaped her and how education played an important role in her life. Welcome to another episode of Unscripted with Russo. I'm your host, Ashley Russo, and I am here with Dawn Godshall. Dawn is the Executive Director of Community Action Lehigh Valley. Dawn, thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me. We're hopeful that one of the purposes that we uh, accomplish on this podcast is to, to help people, especially younger people who have given me a lot of feedback, understand that where someone is when you meet them in their career is not where they started. So when you think about that, were there some things that you gleaned from those more difficult years that you took with you as life lessons that really helped you make your mark early on in television? One of the things that um, my childhood taught me and that I'm working on right now is the fact that kids need a safe place to go, to be, to have fun. And so one of the things that Community Action is attempting to do right now is to build a youth center in Allentown so that kids in Allentown can have a place to go to do their homework, learn how to create music and um, do video production and all of the, the wonderful things, you know, that we're trying to put in the, this youth center. Tell me some of your favorite things to do in the Lehigh Valley. What's something you have a free afternoon? It's, it's a beautiful day out. What do you go do? You're not going to believe me, but I'm going to tell you. I love to fish. <laughs> Wait, what kind of fishing? Like trout fishing? Yeah, I mean, I like all kinds of fishing, but... I'm very stop. close to a creek, Dawn, so yeah. maybe this would be a thing you could teach me. Yeah, and then another thing that I like to do is go uh, motorcycle riding. <laughs> so I... <laughs> My my husband, when I met him, he liked everything fast and he took me on snowmobiles and motorcycles. And so it's one of the things that I really enjoyed doing as well. Dawn, it's been wonderful having you on Unscripted with Russo. Thank you so much for sharing with us a little bit about your life and uh, all the things that you've learned and, and how you got to where you are today. So thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. For the full interview, visit youtube.com slash thepeaktv. And don't forget to subscribe to Unscripted with Russo on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Having to undergo surgery can be scary. Let's see how St. Luke's state-of-the-art technology can put our minds at ease. Knee pain has probably started 30 years ago, 40 years ago. It's arthritis. I've dealt with it for a long time, obviously not as bad as it had been the last few years. Knee pain is very common, especially as our overall population continues to age and maintain a higher level of activity as we progress in age. I went to see a surgeon and they recommended surgery. I wanted to see if the knee could be done robotically. Here at St. Luke's, we have made a commitment to continue to pursue advancements in technology and orthopedic surgery to make sure that we continue to push for better and more positive outcomes for our patients, making sure that we remain leaders 
doctors in our field. A friend of ours had Dr. Sadler last year, and my primary care physician highly recommended St. Luke's orthopedic team. That's what led me to Dr. Sadler. I first met Ed when he came to my office with a complaint of knee pain. Very common complaint, very nice gentleman, great energy about him, and he was very eager to get back to his activities of enjoyment because his knee pain had been slowing him down. So we talked about his pain, the pattern of pain, and how we can kind of tailor a treatment plan for him that would address his desires and allow him to regain the function that he felt like he was missing. He was thorough, didn't hold anything back. And one hesitation he had was my age, but talking to me and hearing about my past history that I was a good candidate for it. Robotic assisted joint replacement is a new and exciting field here for us at St. Luke's. What it does is it takes the patient's specific anatomy, their pattern of disease, and helps the surgeon formulate a plan that we then execute interoperatively with incredible precision and reproducibility. It allows patients to have less pain postoperatively, quicker return to function, less demand for physical therapy, and ultimately returning to their activities of enjoyment and the lifestyle they desire much quicker. After surgery, within a day, the medication just took care of everything. and had soreness, but not real pain. Rehab after total joint replacement, specifically knee replacement, is very important. Physical therapy will continue to encourage the joint mobility. It will help the joint and the muscles get strong. And the physical therapist it was wonderful. I expected it to be a lot of pain, and it just wasn't. I'm improving. My wife says I have to be dedicated. When we look at our journey of life, there are certain things that bring us joy, and it's mostly surrounding experiences with others. It's certain activities, whether it's competing in a sporting event, vacationing with family, or keeping up with grandchildren. The ability to be able to do that brings a smile to people's faces. When arthritis affects these patients and, and starts to take away from those experiences and starts to affect the overall quality of life, that can be very upsetting for patients and they don't feel fulfilled. Being able to give someone the opportunity to regain that aspect of their life or regain that function or regain that joy is something that I find very fulfilling. In the months to come, I'm just looking forward to being able to walk. Overall, it was a wonderful experience. And if I know anybody who needs knee surgery, I'm certainly going to recommend the St. Luke's team, especially Dr. Sadler. Joining me today is Dr. Douglas Lundy, Chair of the Musculoskeletal Department and an Orthopedic Trauma Surgeon for St. Luke's University Health Network. Thanks so much for being here, Dr. Lundy. Thank you, Ashley. As we see, knee pain is pretty common and people walk around with it and they keep doing stuff. They keep running on knee pain. They keep suffering overnight with knee pain. How common is it? And when do you want a patient to come and seek help and just ask what their options are? Very good question. So knee pain is a, it's a, I don't want to use the word pandemic since that's obviously got a different viewpoint these days, but it is a problem that is pervasive throughout our culture. So when people should come in is several fold. Number one, if you've had a severe injury, come in, come in fast, come in soon. You don't necessarily have to go to the ER uh, if, if you can get through the night or whatever, but come in in the morning. Yeah, I have to say, I've always been very impressed with how quickly St. Luke's both orthopedics, but also St. Luke's physical therapy are able to take people in and really assess what's going on. And I think it's important to, to point out that the orthopedic department works very closely with PT. Tell us about that relationship and how critical physical therapists are, not just in treating knee issues, but in diagnosing them as well. These are very smart, very talented people that have a very specific skill set to help with that. So they're experts at the treatment of uh, many of these problems and can get folks moving and functioning back to where they were before. A dramatic amount of our surgery would not be successful were it not for the efforts of the physical therapists. If someone needs knee surgery, and there are so many different things, not just a knee replacement, you've got meniscus tears and ACLs and all kinds of things. What can they expect through that process and how quick is the recovery these days from various knee surgeries? The vast majority of knee pain, like you said, is meniscal tears or anterior cruciate ligament ruptures uh, that our, our surgeons there can do with arthroscopic surgery. Uh, the really cool thing now is with arthroscopic surgery of the knee and knee replacements, 
the return to weight bearing and return to work or return to activities is much faster than it used to be. The techniques are much better. The surgeons are much better. The technology is much better. <laughs> and it's just headed that way. It's, it's almost well, amazing. That's, good. that's really good there news go. though for medicine, right? What can people do in their everyday lives to really avoid knee injuries in the first place? Force-related activities and stretching and warming up ahead of time rather than just jumping in there. We see a lot of 40 and 50 year old men that try to play full contact, full court basketball with the 20 year olds and they tear up their knees, they rupture their patellar ligament or their quadriceps tendon. And a lot of those big things go on and it's a, it's a big deal from that. I know the basics, warm up, cool down, stretch. Right. Don't overdo it. In addition to some of the traditional therapies you've talked about, there are some new therapies that are being implemented. Tell us a little bit about those. The whole idea of restorative biologics or restorative orthopedics is coming into play now. PRP and what is called BMAC. So PRP is platelet-rich plasma, which we take your blood, spin it down. We fractionate the blood out. You don't have to worry about that. But then this, this, this plasma that's left, we can inject into certain areas. Uh, and it really helps dramatically with healing. So specifically around the knee, many of our doctors are using PRP to help get li uh, ligament and tendon injuries to heal much quicker than they would have healed before. And sometimes just recalcitrant injuries that won't heal when you inject them and treat them with PRP, you can help people get better without having to go to sleep, without having surgery, and without having pain. That's really hopeful. And you're really using it from your own body, which is pretty cool too. Thank you so much, Dr. Lundy. We appreciate having you. Thank you very much. When surgery is inevitable, it's a relief to know that we are in good hands with the experts at St. Luke's. I'm Mike Mittman. Thanks for watching. To learn more about anything from today's show, go to our website at thepeaktv.com. And remember, Every day is an opportunity to be your best self. This is The Peak. To inclusivity and social trucking. They couldn't have waited one more word. Get that drone after them. See, so you ought to have the drone circling. Anybody comes in our airspace, chases them out. How many times is it blowing in the wind? <laughs> I'm going to go cool off in the fish pond, yeah. excuse me. <laughs>